Not enough nonsense in your life. Need a little more. More? Well, get ready, because these two have it in spades. Yes, I do. Loose talk. What are you talking about? Nonsense. Even looser opinions. Please explain. And you're along for the ride. Everybody stop in. This is The Burble with Benny and Az. Yes, this is The Burble. Hello, I'm Benny. I'm Az. And welcome along to our podcast. Now, usually what we will do at the beginning of our podcast is it adds that we will talk about uh, what's coming up in the podcast for this episode, but we are going to jump straight into the uh, story that won't go away. The controversy. The controversy that won't go away. We're talking about Israel Folau. Now, before we get into this rant, this story, I should say, about Israel Folau, you can find the, the uh, Burble in a number of places. Of course, we're on Apple Podcasts, so you can uh, subscribe there and download our podcast every single week. If you subscribe, of course, it'll give you a notification that new episodes have dropped. We are also on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts as well. You can get us on Google Podcasts now. Um, <laughs> we're also on CastBox. You can hear us on YouTube as well and various other places, including our podcast partner, which is Spreaker. So Spreaker.com, download their app, and you can also listen to this podcast through Spreaker. We also have web presence. We're on the web at theburble.com.au. You can also find us on Facebook at theburbleau. And the same for Twitter as Let's Go. Israel Folau, this whole controversy. Now, I don't want to get tied up into too much of it, but this is getting to the point where it could get a little bit dangerous. It is a hot topic. Israel Folau started up this GoFundMe page, which basically um, he asked for people for donations to uh, help him in his legal bid against the Australian Rugby Union. Okay? And, uh, and I was very shocked. It just made so much money so quickly before GoFundMe ripped it down. But it's gone back up. Someone else in the in his court has now put another one up, and it's nearly up. What two million you were saying before? Yeah, that's right. The Australian Christian Lobby. Ugh. So they have now got it up. Okay, so um, in it, it's raised in four days or so about one point seven million, but now it's over two million. And um, he is just he basically got on his Instagram and said, "You might not agree with me, but thank you for your support." Unless you're an adulterer, a gay uh, drinker, or something else, whatever else he put on his original post that started this. He now look. The Australian Christian Lobby has called on the Prime Minister Scott Morrison to make a stand when Parliament convenes next week. At these, basically, they're saying in Israel's case is every Australian's case. Hang on, not this one's. No, definitely not mine as well. Thousands and thousands of quiet Australians have donated generously to Folau's legal defence, and many of them are the same quiet Australians who stood up for the religious freedom at the federal election only a month ago. They're saying that Izzy, they're calling him Izzy, mm-hmm. Izzy's treatment speaks volumes about the challenges facing our society. And what have you got to say about that, As? Well, the only challenge he's got is being a multi-million dollar sportsman who got caught out when he thought he was better than everyone else. The things that he said, now, they're his beliefs. Happy days. Happy days. However, though, some people are, you know, pulling their guns out of their their side holsters and shooting them in the air, Yosemite Sam style about it, because they're, they're pretty inflammatory, very much inflammatory, especially to homosexual people who are, you know, they've struggled for so many years to gain respect for their identity and all that kind of thing. Absolutely. Like, they've worked hard. Yep. Probably harder than him. What's mm. he done? Chased a ball around a field for a while. That's exactly right. Just getting to the, the issue of the actual fundraising ads that we yes. want to talk about is that Israel's got $10 million worth of property. And a Lamborghini. He's got a Lamborghini too, does he? Apparently. Right. Look, I, this, this is polarizing. Who's going to want to go to a game, apart from these people who have donated, to watch him? Like, you know, this has annoyed me. It's annoyed a lot of people. It is annoying. It's f***ing annoying. It's ridiculous that this has got the amount of time that it has. Yep. This guy, okay, so it's not out of the blue. His contract was drawn up to say, pull your head in Mm -hmm. and keep your opinions to yourself 
Because he's done it before. It's not the first time. Yeah, he has mouthed off on social media before. You know, there, there are people who work with sports stars, and I know, for example, some in the motor racing industry, right, say supercars. They actually have someone controlling their social media, not the actual player itself or the driver itself. They might have their own personal one, but all stuff that comes out usually will come out through their channels because that they they're have. a brand they're not a person they're a brand while yeah. you're in the public eye if you want to make the millions of dollars and be the high profile public figure you are you're no longer a person you're a brand and yep. you chose that yep totally it's line. not like this is a brand new thing where football players have been given millions of dollars in the last year and become ce- celebrities suddenly mm-hmm. you knew what you're getting into israel and if you didn't want the public scrutiny and the you know the fact in your contract it says don't be a dick Yep, pretty much. Right? Yep. Then don't play rugby. Go and pack shelves at Woolies. Go and use whatever education you've got. I have no idea what education you've got. Get a real job and do it like the rest of us. Yeah. Here's another point that we should make about Israel Folau. He played in the uh, NRL. Then, controversially, he switched to play with, um, I think it was the GWS Giants. He was playing AFL for a time. Was he? Yes, he was. Well, his career made no impact on Australian sport then, did it? There. Then he's moved over to play for the Waratahs and then eventually the War- the Wallabies. Okay? So here's someone who's proving that he can play different codes of football. But make your mind up. Stuff wasn't going your way in the NRL, so you changed the AFL. You realise that this was a game that is played by better sportsmen than you are, sir. And then and then basically he goes, no, nah, I've got to play rugby union. Now, there is another person who's done that. Not the AFL side of things, but Sonny Bill Williams. <laughs> Sonny Bill Williams. He had a dream. He did. Sonny Bill Williams realises that Sonny Bill Williams is a brand and yep. knows not to say stupid stuff like this. As in the NFL, for example, quarterbacks, for example, get paid a ton of money at their respective teams. I don't even want to go into how much Tom Brady earns. But say Russell Wilson, who is the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks, he's on like lots a, of money, $140 million contract. Bloody hell. It is insane amounts of money. None of these people shoot off at the mouth or do anything like that at all. They just they play football because they know they know that their career's on the line. Yeah, and they punish them hard over in the states if a sportsman does something. Well, imagine if Michael Jordan came out and said something like this in his career heyday when Jordan shoes and Jordan, you know, every and posters on every yeah. teenage boy's wall imagine and that. stuff. There's he no, was a brand. He was he wasn't a per- well, he was a person, but he wasn't a private person. He was a brand. He was cult he, of celebrity. He, That's he, what it is. Yeah, and and proof is in the pudding with the shoes, um, the Space Jam movie. Yeah. You know, all Jordan brands. Now, the ACL's decision to host this fundraising page, they kicked it off with a hundred grand of their own money. Uh, Tax deductible, mind you. Yeah, yes. Funnily enough. Funnily enough. So, for example, Visa, MasterCard and America Express all give charities interchange fees of 0%. Oh, so they don't even have to pay the uh, transaction fee when someone donates money to them? No. 26th of June, he has said, I'm incredibly thankful for the Australian Christian Lobby, which has not only come to my defence in the media, but generously established a website to receive donations on my behalf. What was he going to do with this money? Um, so it was just going to give everyone the middle finger and move to bloody Tahiti and live the high life. Probably. I, could, I couldn't ask. Like, I feel like if I'm short on cash, like I can't even, it, it, it's hard for me to ask someone just, you know, can I have a loan until payday, right? Yeah. But he's going, no, um, I need this for my legal fees and my fight against... Um, uh, How about you sell one of your houses there, big man? Why, you got why, a $7 million property empire. Yeah. So what, one of them. Why, sh- pocket. why should Australians um, have to foot the ante, so to speak, because there was the potential that he could get up because he's going for $10 million. <sighs> It's all about money. Is he going to pay back everyone that helped him Don't when he gets know. paid his legal? Because if he wins this case... Heaven forbid, touch wood. I, right? I have no He gets idea. his legal fees paid for him. So, realistically, the case is free for him. Is he going to get his, give the money back to everyone? Of course he's not. I remember the Old Testament, Benny. Let's, oh, let's fight fire with fire for a minute, shall we here, Izzy? Yep. Right? So, number one, I just want to call to your attention. Yeah. Really, really quickly, uh, a, a passage in the Old, Old Testament. Yes. Leviticus yes. 1928. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself. Mm-hmm. There, Mr. Tribal Tattoo all down your f-ing arm. Yeah. You're going to hell, sunshine. You f***ed up. <laughs> I don't think 
that it's cool to say one thing and then pick and choose out of the Bible what you'd like. And also, do not wear clothes of mixed thread. Now, what's his rugby uniform made out of? All Polyester cotton. Yeah. That's two. He's got to be stoned to death. Yes, that's exactly right. And I'm sure he's diddled around, and I'm, I'm not casting dispersions, but if he has a, adulterated, you know, and one of those... Boys trips away, which happens on the end of You Mad Monday, stays on Mad Monday. If yep. you've um, if you've banged a hooker while doing coke, <laughs> you're f- again, sunshine. Yep. Saint Peter's just going to boot you. He's going to be at the doors waiting, going, "Ah, oh, you hypocritical bastard! Here's a pair of bloody nylon shorts. Enjoy them in hell, you tattooed." And then <laughs> straight down the, the see. This the is tube. what I don't like, and I'm I'm not trying to alienate a particular religion, but you can't pick and choose. No, that's right. So as we record this uh, podcast, as um, news has come through that Israel Folau and Rugby Australia failed to reach an agreement in their um, conciliation meeting at the Fair Work Commission in Sydney. So leaving the building, this happened shortly after 1 p.m. alongside his legal team. Could that count to everyone who's, if you've donated, they're part of his legal team? Part of the God Squad, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. He said he was very disappointed in the result. He goes, look, we're very, very disappointed about the outcome today, but I'd like to thank those who've supported me at this time, and I'll continue to stand up for the freedom of all Australians. Unless you're gay, unless you drink. Unless you're an adulterer, unless you worship false idols. Unless you have tattoos. Unless you have tattoos or wear mixed thread. Or eat shellfish. That's also in the Bible, by the way. In the Old Testament? Yeah. You can't eat shellfish. It's unclean. It's unclean. Yep. And if um, you've... Sorry, ladies, but if you come into contact with a woman that's on her moon, you then must <laughs> ritually cleanse yourself and uh, sacrifice an oxen at the temple before you're allowed back into church. But they don't tell you that in Sunday school, do they, kiddies? No. 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 Of course they don't. This gives me um, gives the me shits. the shits. And uh, look, he's just so smug about everything. Like, well, I don't know if he's smug, but... You oh, know, come on. He knows what's going on. Like, it, it, it's... What, it's, do you think houses don't cost any money and people just give them to him? Well, probably in rugby they do as a... What do they call it? Contra? Yeah. Under the table deal. The public debate over Falau's conduct and Rugby Australia's decision to terminate his contract has intensified so much so that he's asked people to fund his case. I just still can't understand this. But he broke his contract. It's not like even it was unfair. Yeah. There was a clause in his contract that said, pull your head in, don't say dumb stuff on social media and make rugby look bad. Yeah. And what does he do? Puts dumb stuff on social media. Now, look, it's fine to have an opinion. It's fine to be proud of that opinion. But it's exactly the same as a penis. It's fine to have one. It's fine to be proud about it. But once you pull it out and start waving it in people's faces, that's when the problems start. Yes, it does. That's right. Now, as I want to move off Israel for a moment. I want to compare it to something else. Okay. Have you ever heard of the Westboro Baptist Church? Oh, unfortunately, yes, I have. Okay, so the Westboro Baptist Church is a group in the United States. You may have seen them on TV. Louis Thoreau did a really great interview. Yeah. With them, he actually yep. spent time with them mm. um, and talking to them and all that kind of thing. Went into the church, all that kind of thing. These are the ones who, and uh, I'm only saying this is factual because this is exactly what they have. And they will picket um, soldiers who have died, like veterans who have died. Yep. Um, their funerals, uh, you know, people who were homosexual. They'll stand out the front and they'll hold up those horrible signs that say "God hates fags." It's it's all over the internet. You can see it quite easily if you want to look for it, but. Don't give them the time of day. These are just redneck, horrible people that have got nothing to better to do. Yeah. Here's, how do you think they make money? You would think that most mainstream America would be like, no, we're not supporting you, and they're no, shocked. There's a lot of bigots in America. In this case, with Israel Flowers making out, there's a lot of bigots in Australia as well. Yeah, exactly. So, you know. So, according to the Southern Poverty Law Centre in the United States, the Westboro Baptist Church is fully funded by its members of the congregation. Well, that makes sense. They have also been awarded tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars from lawsuits over the years. They're what now? Lawsuits. It's as it's almost like their MO, their modus operandi. So what, they just they just intimidate and harass people until yep. they get cranky and then they play the victim. They enrage people into lashing out at them, sue the crap out of them, and f- uh, Fred Phelps, who... Um, he used to be a lawyer before being disbarred, so he was the head of the church. He's now passed away. Um, knows how precisely the system works, how they can get away with it, and who they can successfully You've sue. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not. 
So I know our legal systems here in Australia and the United States are completely and utterly different. I get that. Mm. However, though, I'm thinking that where we're going down this road with this whole Israel Falau thing. Danger at precedent. And you can see it exactly with this Westboro Baptist. 